Um, I'm really excited to be here at Notes 2023. Really excited that Neo4j is holding such a beautiful um, conference. Thank you for that. And um, I'm happy to be here. My name is Kevin Gruner, as you can read from the slides. I work, work for RLE International, an automotive service provider in a really somewhat unique team inside of RLE. Um, that is, we are doing prototypes in the area of data science, hence the name Digital Engineering Specialist. And in that area, I mainly or I often work with um, subject matter experts and need to create uh, data from their knowledge or even um, extract knowledge from existing files and stuff like that uh, in order to do some data science on that. And that directly leads me, leads me to the title of today's talk and the motivation of today's talk. Um, so I want to talk to you about letting your second brain become a graph. And you maybe already know because you're visiting a graph database conference in Neo4j, um, what, what I mean with graph. So I don't mean the functional graph from a math perspective, but the uh, data object graph. Um, but what you might not know is the, the term second brain. And hence, that is the first starting point where we go a little bit deeper and uh, look at what second brain means. In the, um, in the World Wide Web, people refer to second brain as uh, your digital note-taking object. So uh, everything you do to take structured notes or unstructured notes of your digital life, it helps you organize it and also promises to unlock your creative potential. That is something um, people preach about if they are believers. And uh, I don't want to go too deep into this, um, what people believe in and what people don't believe in. I'm more of a theoretical person. So we're staying on the theoretical si side um, of this and talk about the concepts that you can do whilst taking notes, not only digital, but also uh, analog. Um, there are two main concepts, linear note taking, which is basically done when you have a, a story straight up set in stone and you just want to um, go through that story and take notes for that. You don't plan to come back at any point in time and fill out something in the middle. Um, you want to really have that, do that once and then you're finished with it. And on the other hand, there's the concept of nonlinear note taking, which is not exclusively to, to something I will talk about now, but one big factor of that is something you probably all experienced in school, um, where you had to do some group work with other students. And after a brainstorming session, you decided to do a, a real big um, um, map of your ideas. So I'm, I'm currently trying to find the, the right word, but you probably know what I mean. Um, and this kind of map is a node link structure object also referred to as a graph. And you can see that, that is an entry point for people who are not familiar with the mathematical object to come more in touch with it. And after this talk, I don't want I, I want you not only to think about graphs in the context of Neo4j, but also in the context of Obsidian, which is a note-taking tool. I'm going to a little bit deeper in the next few slides. And you can see the two logos uh, up here. I will use the logos uh, for several reasons uh, from now on. Um, because I want to take you through the concept of my idea uh, via an uh, example I did with my colleague. Um, and for that example, we have a certain pipeline in mind. So we'll see, we'll have a look at Obsidian and how it functions in a few moments. 
but let's focus on that pipeline for now. When I first saw what Obsidian was capable of, the first thing I wanted to do is load the data into an actual database. And as per usual, if there is a problem, there's usually a Python package to solve that problem. And I actually found a Python package which solved my problem. Uh, so I cr created the idea for this pipeline, which I didn't found in the uh, web, web so far. So I wanted to share that with the community. Um, Obsidian is, for me, an easy to use tool to insert any information in a structured or maybe unstructured way, preferably structured. Uh, and it uh, gives access to subject matter experts to the idea of, of, of graphs. Then you have Python, you can open the, the vault, so the place where every node from the subject matter expert is taken. You can open that with Obsidian tools, a, Py a Python package, um, and analyze that in Python. Or what I did is you can transfer that via something else. I mean, we, we all know some APIs to call from Python to Neo4j. You can transfer all the relevant data to the database Neo4j and work inside that. This also allows for data enrichment on the Python side. And at the end, we are able to do some data analysis. But enough for the theory, for the theoretical part. Let's have a look at this um, Obsidian I'm always talking about. And let's jump into um, the graph my colleague provided me with. Um, So my colleague, which whose name is obfuscated right now, um, take all the necessary information he wants to provide on his website um, about his holiday, about his holidays. So what I suggested to him is put that all in Obsidian and we'll work out the rest. And that's what he did. So he provided all the necessary information of all the holidays he spent his time at. Um, so we can, we have here the person and, and then we can click on a holiday and to visualize stuff as a graph. Um, so a few things to mention. Um, so we want to do a holiday graph, a holiday which consists, a holiday graph which consists of holidays, persons, and locations. And we are looking at three um, relationship types. The thing with Obsidian is that it doesn't provide specific relationship types. This edge only means that in the file, in the one file, in one of these two files, the other file is mentioned. That's not really um, a strong suggestion to the user. So what we did is we said that there should be a front matter with actual relationship types, for example, attendees, all the people attending the uh, attending uh, the holiday, and a location with all the places that um, are connected to that holiday. So we have, at the end, three types of nodes, person, um, holiday, and Da, 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 and, and location. And we have three types of relationships. I mentioned two already. So attendees and, and locations are two from and to the holiday. And the third one is inside location. Uh, okay. So how, how would you do that? So you can. Uh, Right. Hey, Kevin, uh, I think you're muted. So, oh yeah, here you go, I think. Are you back on? 
there was some problems i think with the internet connection probably where you were sharing your screen um and sharing your camera are you back now I cannot hear you. Sorry, everybody. Well, I can safely say that this never happened before. <laughs> I'm very I know you're back. That and I will, I will turn off my camera. I didn't know about that. I turn off my camera when I share my screen. Uh, sorry about that, audience. Um, so, in re with respect to time, let's skip a little uh, about that uh, about the part in in inside Obsidian. And um, so, what I next the next thing I wanted to show you. Usually my internet connection isn't too bad, but it seems I cannot share at the moment. Well, it comes up. Okay. Um, the thing is, now I wanted to um, go ahead and model the, the schema we created in our mind inside uh, Python to the Neo, Neo model API to get that information into the graph. And I will skip a little bit over that. So what I did is, I wrote uh, a Python um, Python file that has all the nodes, node types, and no relationships in it. This is what this file is all about. So we have three node types: holiday, person, and location. And we have um, two relationships from holiday and one relationship inside the location graph. And then what I did was um, I wrote a 200 line Python script that opens the vault, the Obsidian vault via the Obsidian tools package, connects that into Python, and then transfers all the information into Neo4j by dividing the vault, creating the um, sequently the, the nodes and edges. So at the end, we have also the edges between holidays and attendees and holidays and locations. I, I hope I can. They can still have one or two minutes because now it gets really interesting. Um, you can do some um, some additional stuff like data enrichment. So what we did was uh, I accessed an open AI, uh, open API of GeoCode, and I uh, extracted the longitude and latitude of a city country of a location and also put that in and once that is all done and uh, transferred to neo4j we can actually do stuff with that so um, instead of showing you that the script runs through you can check that by yourself let's talk about data analysis so what we couldn't do in obsidian but what we can do is in and the graph database is use additional add-ons like the NeoMap um, written by Estelle, a community member. And then we can uh, easily see where his main vacation goals were. So for example, you can see that uh, my colleague likes to travel to Central Europe. And you can especially see that it's uh, that Southern uh, England and also Northern Italy are the main goals. Um, and another thing that you can do with data analysis is inside Bloom, you can um, add an algorithm for the holiday to person graph. And then you can select Louvain, for example, to find communities inside that graph, which you were also weren't able to before. Uh, apply that algorithm and it should have pre-calculated the result because I run that once, um, so it's quite fast. And you can see that maybe here is uh, the family he's gone on vacation to a few times. And actually, he and his wife, uh, which is the obfuscated name Bella, 
are in one community having the, the most of the holidays in here. And that is everything I wanted to show when it comes to data analysis. And let's go to the very last slide um, where you can actually go into uh, everything I showed you today into the slides and into the um, repo where you can access that script and see for yourself and do some data analysis. Um, and I want you to go outside, talk to your subject matter expert and um, transfer information, getting him closer to a graph by him using Obsidian and then transferring that inf information via Python and maybe data enrichment inside Neo4j and making that publicly available via um, one of these tools maybe. So we have Neo-Dash, we have um, your own website or Power BI or other things like NeoMap and so on and so forth. Thank you for listening. Sorry for over um, uh, taking too much time and sorry for the problems. Have a nice conference. <laughs>